Help. I need somebody. Help. Not just anybody. Help. I need someone. Help. Well, good morning, church. Welcome to the Cathedral of the Rockies. My name is Dwayne. I'm one of the pastors here, and I need a little. You knew that. You've heard me preach before, huh? <laughs> Well, welcome. We're glad you're here. I ran into a friend the other day and he went, Pastor Dwayne, I'm so glad you're back in Boise. I can't wait to hear about the Camino. When will you preach on that? <laughs> and I went, well, I kind of did that the last three weeks. So if you <laughs> happen to still be on vacation or be, miss that, you can go to um, our website or Google All Means All podcast and it's out there on the All Means All podcast and you can connect that way. But today, we're going to start um, jumping into the gospel according to the Beatles. Some of you, this will be a flashback. For some of you, you'll just have to Google it, all right? Um, Get out your guitar hero. You'll you'll figure it out. But it starts, we're starting with this song, Help. Let's try it. Let's see if you can help me. Help. 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 Yeah, we need a little music help, don't we? Yeah, <laughs> including me, I was a little off-pitched there. But this started in 1965 when a young man at the age of 25, literally, who was at the top of his life, or what we would perceive to be the top of his life, wrote a song that became a generational lament. Actually, one of the members in the nine o'clock service stopped me on the way out and said, my friends and I sang this song in Vietnam as a way to survive. Wow. It was a generational lament. This young man's name, of course, was John Lennon. He was a member of the band that holds the record, even today, of the most music units sold ever. And what I mean by units, records, CDs, downloads, any way you can get music, over 183 million units sold. It's estimated that was probably over at least a billion bucks. And the popularity of the band that uh, that we call the Beatles, there was a phrase that was coined by the British press called Beatlemania because people went nuts when they were around. Watch the screen. An awesome way. Our staff scientist in an odd moment calculated that this young mob is generating enough energy to put three Atlas missiles in orbit and power 54,000 transistor radios. Some of the fences hold, others do not. A minor miracle is mounted by the fact that there are no injuries spread among the near hysterical crowd. This truly is a social document for our time. Kind of reminds you of 10 o'clock service, doesn't it? (laughs) Trying to get in here, I know it's tough, I know it's tough. John Lennon went on in an interview a few years later to make a comment that would haunt him most of his life when he said, we're more popular than Jesus now. I don't know which will go first, rock and roll or Christianity, a statement he later apologized for, but in many quarters he was never forgiven. In the midst of this historic, unprecedented popularity that still somewhat remains unmatched today, when Lenin himself, 40 years ago, had amassed at least $800 million due to the popularity of the Beatles, It was then that Lennon wrote, help. At the release of the song, the Vietnam War was raging. Malcolm X had been assassinated. There were race riots in our country in places like Watts. And Lennon wrote these words, help, I need somebody. Help, not just anybody, help. I need someone to help. And then these beautiful lyrics. When I was so much younger than today, I never needed anybody's help in any way. You remember those days? When you had all the answers? When your parents were idiots? Remember that? And now, these days are gone, I'm not so self-assured. Now I find I changed my mind and opened up the door. Help, Help me, if you can. I'm feeling down. 
and I do appreciate you being around. Help me get my feet back on the ground. Won't you please help me? When we was being interviewed about this song in 1980, John Lennon said, when help came out, I, it was actually a cry for help for me. You've probably heard me, if you've been here before, you've heard me say nearly every weekend for the last three years, these four things. You are loved by and you matter to God. No crisis will last forever. There's always hope. And if you need help, ask. Why is it so hard to ask for help? If you go to the Gospel of Matthew, you find in chapter 14 this very familiar story. Verse 22 reads like this. As soon as the meal was finished, he, Jesus, he insisted the disciples get in the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the people. With the crowd dispersed, Jesus climbed the mountain so he could be by himself and pray. This is his ask for help. He stayed there alone late in the night. The story continues. Evening comes, Jesus is up there alone. He sent the disciples ahead. Listen to the text, verse 24. By this time, the boat was a long way from the shore. It was going against the wind. It was being tossed around by the waves. A little while before morning, Jesus came walking on the water toward his disciples. When they saw him, they thought he was a ghost. They were terrified and they started screaming. And once Jesus said to them, don't worry, I am Jesus. In the Greek, it's ego ami. It's the same language when, when Moses says, who do, who do I say sent me? Ego ami, I am, I am. Don't be afraid. Peter replied, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come on, Jesus said. Peter then got out of the boat and started walking on the water toward him. Isn't it amazing how that line is just familiar to us? And we read it like, yep, Peter walked on water. Peter walked on water. I mean, he's not skiing, he's not wave running. I mean, we forget how shocking this is. But then Peter saw how strong the wind was. He was afraid. He started sinking. Save me, Lord, he shouted. In other words, help. I need somebody. Not just anybody. This is Simon Peter's call for help. Why is it so hard to ask for help? I think a lot of times we fear that maybe we'll be judged we fear that others will see us less than. We fear someone will say, no, I'm not gonna help you. We fear being weak. We, we fear looking foolish. The rabbis tell the story of a parent watching their child kind of playing outside, and as the child was playing outside, they had a, a rock they kept trying to lift, and they couldn't, they couldn't quite lift it. They kept failing. And finally, the parent said, are you using all of your strength. To which the child said, yes. And the parent said, actually you're not. You've never asked me to help you. I'm right here. It's hard to ask for help. I mean, sometimes we feel so foolish when we ask. Uh, years ago, we were vacationing on the East Coast and all four kids were little and we had uh, been at the beach, but we decided we'd spend a day in Philadelphia and see, you know, the historical stuff. The Liberty Bell, Independence Hall, all that stuff, Ben Franklin's home, all that. And we got to, we drove into the city. This is before Google, okay? Some of you didn't know there was a, a BC, right? Before BG, before Google. We were using maps, you know, pay, you know, so we get to the city um, and we're not sure where everything is. And we park, four kids, we park, I get out and I think, I'll just, I'm gonna ask for help. I'll ask the first person I see, can you point me in the direction of Independence Hall? And I said, I got my four kids here, we only have a day, we're trying to get a lot done. Can you point me in the direction of Independence Hall? And they went, um, right there. <laughs> We had parked right beside it. I mean, sometimes we're afraid to ask for help for that very reason that we'll look like 
a nut, an idiot, like we don't have it all together. It's like when you ask your family, where are my glasses? And they're like, on your face? You're like, oh, yeah, okay, all right. It's hard to ask for help. Author Marjorie Worrell writes this, as with many things that would serve us and others, our fear is what gets in the way. Fear of overstepping a friendship, fear of appearing too needy, fear of imposing, fear of revealing our struggle and having people realize we don't have it all together after all. Yet there are moments when the only statement we can make is help. Asking for help is a moment of surrender. And that's okay. It can be a moment where we confess, I'm not really in control. I don't have the answers. I don't have the strength. I'm not even sure what the questions are. I remember the very first time I went to a counselor for my own mental health. And it was hard at first to ask for help. But then a friend of mine said, well, do you go to the dentist? And I was like, yeah, I go to the dentist. They said, when do you go to the dentist? I said, well, it was time to get my teeth cleaned or when I have a toothache. And they're like, yeah, when your tooth hurts, you go to the dentist. When life hurts, you go to the therapist. And I was like, oh, cool, okay, yeah, I can do that. The second time, though, was even harder. When the therapist said, let's schedule your next appointment. It was like, oh, I have to come back? (laughs) You mean, I'm really that undone, you know? And it took a season for me to realize that Jesus and a therapist are a great combination. So if you struggle with that, it's okay. It's the healthy people that are able to ask for help. Does Jesus respond to Simon Peter when he says, help? Yeah, you know the story, verse 31. Jesus didn't hesitate. He reached right down and he grabbed his hand and he said, faint heart, what got into you? And then he pulls Simon Peter up and restores him to community in the boat. If you look at this gospel, oh, there's this great picture. I think we have, uh, Young Sung Kim did this picture of the hand of Jesus reaching into the water. I don't know if you've ever seen this. If you Google it, Young Sung Kim, or just Google hand reaching into the water, the picture will come up. I love this perspective though, don't you? Of being under the water. (laughs) I mean, that's when you need some help. I need the hand of God at times, right, to come and meet me right where I am. If you look at this gospel, uh, chapter 14 of Matthew, you'll find out it's a, it's a whole chapter of seeking help. It begins with Jesus hearing that his cousin, John the baptizer, has been killed by the state. Herod has had him murdered. And word comes to Jesus, your cousin's dead. And like any of us in unexpected grief, he, he seeks to find some help. And so it says Jesus looks for the lonely places. He goes to the lonely places to be alone and to be present with God. But when he gets there, the people have followed him. Why? They need help. And then like sheep without a shepherd, Jesus teaches them. How can he not help them even in the midst of his own need for help? And you might remember the disciples then later go, hey, it's been a full day. Send the people home, they're hungry. And and Jesus says, no, we we can help. We can feed them. And then he sends the disciples ahead and they have that moment in the storm. And again, Peter says, help. And Jesus helps. Could it be that our help will come when we're willing to help others even in the midst of our need? in the midst of our own problems, if we're willing to be merciful to others. There's this moment, you know, where Jesus is feeding the 5,000, or they've gathered the people before him and they've said, Jesus has said, let's feed the 5,000. And the disciples say, we can't send, their, send them home. We don't have enough. Jesus replies, they don't need to go away. You give them something. He's trying to get the disciples to help. But why don't they help? We, we don't have enough. We feel inadequate. We've checked Jesus. Five loaves, two fish. That's what we got. Send the people home. 
Sometimes we don't help because we feel inadequate. Instead of placing what we do have in God's hands, instead of meeting the need in front of us, we think, I I can't stop the war in Ukraine. Can't do anything about that. Well, what did I do? I bought a shirt from a woman made in Ukraine that took about five months to get to me, but there was one person that I could support. It didn't stop the war. Maybe it helped feed her family that day. We can do the one thing. You know, when Jesus fed the 5,000, they were hungry the next day. It didn't end hunger. (laughs) It ended hunger for the moment. When we give out lunch bags every day through the week, we don't end hunger, we end hunger for the moment. When we have friendship feasts later today, we don't end hunger, we end it for the moment. When you buy a paper from Interfaith Sanctuary today, you don't end homelessness, you help for the moment someone take the next step. These are acts of mercy. And Christians, followers of God, are always called to acts of mercy. There are acts of justice. Justice is when you and I say to our local government and the federal government, why are there more homeless people? How do we build affordable housing? It's when we get into the issue at the next day and say we want to solve the issue. Jesus does a lot of acts of mercy along with acts of justice. There's a story, you know the story of the Good Samaritan when, when the one is left for dead and the, th- the three come by. Notice what takes place. The religious people don't meet the need. The one we would have said was non-religious or different religious does. He meets the need. You've been beat up, I'll bandage your wounds, I'll take you to the next place. But notice what he doesn't do. He doesn't stop his journey. He continues on. He doesn't take responsibility for this person for the rest of his life. He he meets the immediate need and he continues the journey. Sometimes we're afraid to help because we're afraid we never get away from the commitment. What if you met the immediate need and continued the journey? Does Jesus ever ask for help? I think there's lots of places where Jesus asks for help. You can watch Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane when he takes Peter and James and John and says, come with me and pray. And then in verse uh, 39 of Matthew chapter 26, going a little ahead, he fell on his face praying, my father, if there's any way, get me out of this. But please, not what I want. You do what you want. And then he goes back to those same three disciples and you remember, are they praying? They're sleeping. The people he asked for help fell asleep. It's like the nine o'clock service. The people he asked for, don't worry, next service I'm gonna say it's like the 10 o'clock service, so (laughs) you're on the list too. I mean, the people he asked for help don't help. And you could ask, does God help answer his prayer? God, if you can take this from me, if you can do it another way, do it kind of silence. I mean, sometimes we don't ask for help because we're afraid like Jesus. Maybe there'll be silence. Maybe the people we ask fall asleep. But you continue the journey. What do you do when the response is no? Sometimes you have to move on and make another request. Sometimes you have to ask someone else. Sometimes you might have to take a step yourself that you never expected. Sometimes you might have to reconsider what it is you're asking. Why isn't anyone willing to help with this? What am I asking? Is it, is it more than people can bear? Well, t- today I want you to get this. The gospel according to the Beatles is a gospel that says it's okay to ask for help. It's a gospel that says it's okay to be the answer to someone else's request. Hear the words again. When I was younger, so much younger than today, I never needed anybody's help in any way. Now these days are gone. 
and I'm not so self-assured, and now I find I've changed my mind and I've opened up the doors. Help me if you can. I'm feeling down. Help me. I do appreciate you being around. Help me get my feet back on the ground. Won't you please help me? Here are the two action steps today. First is be open to God's help. If you've made a request, are you open to it and are you open to seeing it come from an unexpected place? Be open to God's help. And last, each morning, can you ask God, maybe in a prayer, how can I be the answer to someone else today? How can I help someone out? Are you willing to watch so that you can offer help? Let's pray together. Hey God, thanks for the privilege of coming together for worship. Thanks for the chance to be in this space. Thanks for music that it can inspire us, that can even, even contain your good news. It's okay to ask for help. Be with us as we continue to worship. Be with us as we make our, our request of help and be with us as we try to be the answer to someone else as we serve in the midst of our own needs. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Help. I need somebody. Help. Not just anybody. Help. I need someone. Help.